And this is probably the most important thing I'm going to talk about in this tutorial. This next VST is probably one of the most underrated VSTs I've found in a long time. There is, however, one effect plugin that gets used in like practically every single one of his beats. This is probably the most used snare of 2020, to be honest. This is the biggest key to making your drums hit. All right, what's good, YouTube? So in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to make like new Atlanta beats for Lil Baby. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over what new Atlanta sound actually is, how to make proper drum patterns, as well as melodies for these types of beats, the best VST sounds and presets to use, the best drum kits and drum sounds, how to master your beats, as well as various tips and tricks along the way. Also, if you want any of the drum sounds or samples that I use in this tutorial, there's a link in the description where you can download them completely free. Also, for everyone who submitted their beats for review, I'm going to most likely do that next so i'll let you guys know in advance both on my youtube and instagram which by the way is at fin of the god so make sure to go follow that and i'll also make sure to do them in order in which they were sent also if you want to send beats or samples since i'm working with some bigger artists right now send them to fin of finesse beats at gmail.com but enough of that let's talk about new atlanta beats so what do i mean by new atlanta well for the longest time back when it was like Southside and metro and the other 808 mafia members working with guys like future and young thug the sound was all about like spins 808 hit one hi-hat Weezy snare plus the Lex Luger clap. Well, for the longest time back when it was just Southside, Metro, and other 808 Mafia members working with guys like Future and Young Thug, the sound was all about the spins 808, the hit one hi hat, the B Weezy snare plus the Lex Luger clap, snares, and open hats. So the drum patterns were generally all about fast hi hats with a lot of triplet rolls. And practically every 808 pattern, like I talked about in the Pyrex tutorial, revolved around this one right here. The melodies were a lot of bells, pads, and key sounds with various layers and effects like reverb and delay. Mainly they were Nexus 2 sounds with a little bit of Electra X and like Omnisphere every now and then. As well you'd see effect tricks on the melodies along with basic EQs, your basic reverbs, love filters, stuff like that. The melodies were almost always a manually drawn out ARP with the most basic of counter melodies playing under them. And then those sounds were just layered on top of a bunch of other sounds till so you get something that sounds like this. However, the sound nowadays has changed a lot from what it was, so that's why I'm calling it New Atlanta, because some of those things that I just talked about is what most people associate with Atlanta when they think of what it sounds like. So the New Atlanta sound has evolved side by side with like guys like Lil Baby and Gunna. So in this tutorial, I'm going to focus specifically on Lil Baby, but let me know if you want me to do Gunna next. But yeah, examples of New Atlanta beats would be stuff like Whoa, The Bigger Picture, We Paid, Emotionally Scarred, Heating Up, and recently Everybody by Lil Baby. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down everything that has and hasn't changed and what all these beats have in common and finally everything you need to know to make your own new atlanta beats so let's talk about sounds vsts and presets so the main types of sounds that you hear in these beats are a lot of dry sounds specifically pianos flutes strings and synthetic string and brass like sounds so i'm going to go over the most used vsts for each of these types of sounds so for pianos the majority of the time they're just omnisphere slash keyscape pianos specifically the la grand piano presets you also hear in some cases pianos from like nexus specifically though with the effects off, but I advise just sticking to Keyscape. For flute sounds, these are the two VSTs that you want to use. The first one is again Omnisphere. The specific libraries you want to browse for flute sounds are the Trons and Optical, Retroland, as well as Pads and String libraries. This next VST is probably one of the most underrated VSTs I've found in a long time. It's called SRX Keys, and it's used a lot for these types of beats. It contains a lot of dry key and lead sounds that are used in a lot of these new Atlanta beats. Specifically, you should use the PRB bank, because that's where you're going to find most of the flute sounds. And as for strings, there's three VSTs which are used like 99% of the time. The first one is once again Omnisphere. Specifically, you want to look in the pads and strings and acoustic strings section. The next one is Purity. Specifically, look in the strings library. And finally, the SRX Orchestra library is another good one. Specifically, you want to look in the PRA bank within the VST. And as for synthetic sounds, I'd recommend Omnisphere or honestly any cheap looking old synth VST that you can find. One which I know is used a lot is called OPX, but I don't even own it. Also, you can try like the Anne analog lap banks or the SRX World VSD, as well as Purity, specifically in the fast and slow synth library, but it's all up to you. There's no best one in particular. So let's talk about melodies. So right off the bat, Lil Baby beats don't have a specific tempo, but they usually do sit in the ranges of like 130 to 180 BPM. Usually his beats sit in the lower minor octaves. Anything from like C minor to E minor works best, I find. So I'd say try starting off by making your melodies in like, let's say the D minor scale and pitching it up and down to your liking. So the structure of these beats are generally 
a basic chord progression with a simple arpeggiating melody on top, as well as a basic counter melody playing either above or below everything. The melodies are incredibly simple, meaning they don't have a lot of rhythm and don't use a lot of notes. As a matter of fact, most of the chords used in these beats are made up of only like two notes. A lot of the times, the melodies tend to also be eight bars long instead of four. By the way, before I continue, a lot of you have noticed that in my piano roll, it says four bars, even though I'm talking about eight. That's because for some weird reason, my version of FL Studio is bugged. So when you see me using four bars in the piano roll, I'm actually using eight bars. Just thought I'd let you know because a lot of you guys were saying that. Also, if you know why this is happening, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, usually when these eight bar melodies are being used, there tends to be a lot of sounds that get brought in and out as well. Stuff like basic flute, synthetic, or string sounds that, like I talked about in the Metro tutorial, are simple, don't have a lot of rhythm, and really just serve as a way to keep like the beat more interesting. You find example melodies to this in like Air Buddy, The Bigger Picture, and Something to Prove. This isn't always the case though. Usually when a four bar melody is made, it's a lot more of a chord driven melody with just like a single sound that comes in and out of the beat. This is often like a layered synth, choir, or like flute lead sound. Examples of beats that use this is Emotionally Scarred, We Paid, Woe, and Heating Up. Also the main melody slash progression that plays throughout the beat is less often a piano, where in the case of like the eight bar melodies, it almost always is. So when you think of a little baby beats, you'd mainly think of them being anthemic, a little bit dark, and slightly sad with the melodies. So I focus on using large gaps between your notes, as well as like a few one note and two note gaps. Basically, you just want to find your own balance between the two. There's no in particular one, which is better. Finally, when you're done making your melodies, try doing the velocity trick that I talked about in the last tutorial. If you haven't seen that, just highlight your entire melody and then hit Alt R on your keyboard, and then the randomizer will open. Select levels and mess with the velocity knob, as I've noticed that this was done in like practically every single little baby beat that I deconstructed, and it just makes your melody sound like it was played by hand, which is always better. Yeah, but that's it for melodies. So here are a few examples of melodies from Lil Baby Beats. As for effects, you want to keep it as dry as possible, so don't overdo it with like reverbs, delays, and all that crazy stuff. There is however one effect plugin that gets used in like practically every single one of his beats. The plugin is RC20, and what it does is it just helps make those dry presets that are so commonly used in these beats sound real, because the problem with the most of them is that they really sound stale and boring without it, so this plugin can really help with that. But yeah, that's all you really need to know. So let's talk about drum patterns. So for drum sounds, it's still the basics in terms of like what kits and drum sounds to use, mainly drum sounds from the left. Lex Luger, Polo Boy, DY, and other 808 Mafia member drum kits are ideal. As for sounds, there are a few things to note that have changed though. First off, the Know the Meaning slash Lex Luger snare. This is probably the most used snare of 2020 to be honest. Usually it gets pitched up and down or EQ'd a little bit, but that's easy stuff that the majority of you already know how to do. Just understand that one thing people don't consider with drum sounds is how stretched out each sound is. That's generally the most important thing to consider apart from just how hard it's hitting in general. And as I've talked about before on this channel, when you pitch sounds up, you're also shortening that drum sound and vice versa when you pitch it down. Also, here's a little trick that I've been doing since I first started producing. While being as gentle as you can, you can mess with this time stretch multiplicator knob right here and generally move it to the left or to the right to stretch the drum sound without changing the pitch. Also, if you want to make your snares hit harder, try layering them. People tend to stick to just layering snares with claps, but a lot of these beats tend to layer snares on top of each other to give it more energy at certain parts. It's all up to you though, just stick to the idea that if it sounds good, it is good. There's also been this research 
resurgence of the use of the spins 808 because as for the last two years as all producers probably know it's all been about the say 808 and like short stubby 808s this is probably the most used 808 in all of his beats though the main thing that you want to focus on is messing with this out knob right here what you got to consider about 808s is that there's two things that determine how hard they hit and that's the amount of 808s you use and how quickly they fade in and out when played so what i'm trying to say is that if you're using a higher tempo or just a lot of 808s in general try using the out knob and tightening the sound also i'd say generally don't add too many effects to it as it's usually just left completely dry when used in these beats and this is probably the most important thing i'm going to talk about in this tutorial with these types of beats the traditional 808 pattern that i talked about in the pyrex tutorial has changed for new atlanta beats so like i played in the beginning of the video here's what the traditional 808 pattern sounds like And here's what the new 808 patterns sound like. For the first one, you can see that the 808 hits right before and on the second clap. Also, you can see for the second that the 808 is hitting in positions where a snare normally would. And as for reference, the pattern that I just played you is the one used in the beat everybody, which uses both of those, which uses both those kind of styles as you probably heard, because the 808 in the first part is hitting where the second clap does, but still hitting also where a snare normally would. Finally, the last thing to note that's changed is the hi-hats. Instead of having lots of rolls or just complex hi-hats altogether, the hi-hat patterns used in these new Atlanta beats are very basic and repetitive and usually are no more than two types of hi-hat rolls and they usually repeat over two and four bars rather than being really unique and complex throughout the entire beat and as for effects and making the hi-hat rolls a lot of the times the hi-hat patterns are made with effect tricks this is probably the most used plugin when it comes to the drums you can experiment with practically everything in here the main one i'd focus on though is the loop effect right here and just experiment with the preset honestly as an example the hi-hats used in emotionally scarred were made with effect tricks and they sound like this And another thing you see not too often, but sometimes in his beats, specifically in bigger picture, is that instead of using a traditional two-step hi-hat pattern, they'll use this triplet pattern, and that sounds something like this. And as for the case of when to use that hi-hat pattern, it's mainly used because the main melody is also being played in triplets, so it works well together. And yeah, apart from that, there's nothing else you need to know when it comes to the drums. So let's talk about mastering your beats. This is the biggest key to making your drums hit. What I personally like to do is put a soft clipper on the bottom of the master, and then I'll have two EQs that I use to increase the highs. The reason I don't always EQ the mids is because I make a lot of alternate R&B stuff as well. So for those types of beats, you don't want to have the mids raised that way. It only really works for hip hop beats, so I don't normally add it but you can still use it as i will sometimes the main thing though that i do is eq the high ends of my beats a bunch i go to about 4 db on the original parametric eq and then somewhere around 0 to 2 db on the low end specifically at the 230 db range by the way all my go-to drum sounds mixing and mastering presets that i've gathered over the last five years are all in my most wanted volume one drum kit so link in the description if you want to go buy that i also just have this last eq under the first one just in case i want to cut out certain frequencies i don't like or increase the highs mids or lows a little bit more but yeah that's all i do and that's all you really need to know for these types of beats yeah but that's gonna be for drums as well as this tutorial make sure once again to follow my instagram and twitter at fin the god i'm still giving away that drum kit to this day after every video so go check that out i also do polls on what video i'm going to be doing next so make sure to check that out and vote as well as keep up with what i'm doing also on a side note i've noticed it's been getting harder and harder to make these types of tutorials without the material i talk about getting too repetitive because you'll hear me a lot saying like i said in this tutorial like i said in that tutorial so i'm probably going to start mixing things up and not just do these specific types of tutorials i'm still gonna do them though i'm just saying that i don't think i should be releasing only these types of videos because there's only so much you can talk about so i'm gonna do the ones first that were requested the most like for sure i'm gonna be doing white armor sometime soon but after that let me know which ones you want to see and more importantly what types of videos you want me to do next like would you want me to do more personal stuff like q a's stuff like youtube marketing tutorials live streams type beat tutorials uploading actual type beats that i made or more general stuff like drum pattern tutorials tutorials, mastering tutorials, organizing your beats, quick tips and tricks, etc. Let me know in the comments. But yeah, apart from that, make sure to like, subscribe, and peace.
So here's the tradition. So, 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 